This part here, okay. What we want to do for this axial elongation is actually okay, to determine whether the bar having tensile, tensile or having compression. Okay. So if you maybe you draw the arrow like I did previously, it will make some confusion. So if you think clearly, what will happen with this bar? is, for example, if we start from here, as the question mentioned, we have to look at A with, uh, with respect to E. So we start from here, so we cover all this, this um, element on the right side. Okay. If we cover all this, okay, so we have this A kilonewton, and we see that this bar having a, a, a tension, okay? so it's, it's like a, having a tension about A kilonewton. Right. Okay, so that's the first one that we need to take into account. So imagine that this will be having a tension. So let me just write with just T okay, instead of the direction. It will make some confusion. And then if we look on here, what will we have if we cover this part? Okay. We have A to the left, 4 to the right, so we have four, right, we have four. So we have four, so this bar again, it's getting attention, right? So imagine you are the bar inside here. If you have like a force going here, you need to have also going there. So it's attention, right? If I draw the, the, the arrow, it will make a confusion. But if you think that this will be having, because it says eight, it's four, it's going to the left, they need to have to the right. So the bar getting attention, right? Okay? Tensions. It tensions. Okay. So you need to think on the bar. What's the bar getting? Is it getting longer or getting shorter? Longer or shorter? <laughs> getting longer or shorter? Longer. Okay, so it's, it has a tension here. Okay? So that's why. But here, is it getting longer or shorter? What happened? Shorter. Okay. So, so, so like I said, if you draw the arrow here, it will have a con confusion. So, in terms of the actual elongation, it is best to just see what's happened inside the bar. Is it a tension or compression? Okay. So that's why this is having. 2 kilonewton in compression. Okay. So it's, it's a little different on what we have before, that we define the equilibrium like usual, the sigma f equals 0, blah, 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 right? Of course, this is also in equilibrium, but we need to see in terms of each bar what is happening. Okay. Is it getting elongated or is it getting shorter? Okay. 
Okay. But perhaps this question is, I think, too much. <laughs> but usually, what the question will be is getting like at least two bar, or I think at least maybe maximum three bars, and then see uh, what you can uh, observe from the, those bars. Okay. At least most of the question, if you look at the, if you have the textbook, most of the questions will be <coughs> like you have a bar with a sum uh, with a, a diameter, and then we have a second one that is continuous from the first bar, maybe different diameter and maybe different uh, uh, force, and then you need to elaborate on how the uh, bar getting elongated. Maybe another type of questions is. Maybe the bar having different, different e, okay, different, uh, different uh, modulus elastic, okay. Okay, then uh, I think last time, oh yeah, we haven't finished this, okay. So at the most case, this bar, I think uh, will be frequently asked, like you have two bars like this, either it is different diameter or maybe different materials, okay, like the E, different E, that uh, may be asked. And Remember that for we, we say for statically determined structures. Okay, for statically determined structures, uh, what what does it mean? Okay. So the structures basically what what the determinant means is we can know the structure based on what we have in the uh, picture, which means that it's already stated all the informations, the force, uh, the diameter, all the things already made make into the picture or into the information. Okay. So these three uh, three elements need to be written down. First is of course the equilibrium. Okay. The equilibrium how you get the, uh, the force. And then uh, the element force deformation, which is the this F L A E lay. Okay. And then you can also rewrite the L over A E with F, and if you connect to the uh, the spring, if you remember the physics, the Hooke's law, uh, the same same Hooke's law we have here, and then at the at the end, third one is the compatibility equations, and we are going to see a lot in the future of uh, this compatibility equations. So compatibility equation is an equation that combines these two uh, structures. So we have two bars that need to be uh, combined. Well, for now, since it's mostly the case is maybe the material is the same um, and the difference is only the di uh, diameter, then this is basically we find the elongation on the first part plus this elongation on the second part. If maybe the the elongations may shorten, then it, it will be minus. So it may be one bar getting shorter, one bar getting elongated. It can be done like that, okay, from this uh, uh, compatibility, compatibility equation. But I think I haven't uh, worked out on this uh, numbers. So let's take input for the numbers. Okay, let me take space. Okay, so we 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 begin with the with with uh, first bar. Okay, so the first bar, the first bar. If we would like, we can start with the this f small f like this. L one is three hundred millimeter. And then what is the area? Area A 
area is 20 millimeter diameter so a pi and then 10 millimeter square right and then e is e1 is 200 gpa remember gpa okay let me let, let me make um, so gpa and then usually maybe start with this okay. usually to make uh easier to look at mpa is what we have is newton per millimeter square okay so you can think gpa is a thousand more right a thousand multiplied so we can think gpa as kilo newton millimeter square okay okay now we can write the gpa here which is 200 kilo newton per millimeter square okay why this units uh, important uh, and it's also helpful okay? so if you have a questions you have the unit maybe you feel nervous to look on the equation you can think and confirm with the unit that your your way or your method is correct so look at this this is millimeter this is a millimeter square which is going to cancel out with this and we are going to have the F here that the F or later the strain or the elongations that we are looking for is going to be in millimeter, right? So we what we want to find here is millimeter over some force, which is the Newton. And I think it's correct now. It's getting canceled and we have millimeter over kilometer. And I think it's correct. And we can uh, multiply this with the force later okay, to find these uh, 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 elongations, to find the distance. Then you can try. Let me just double confirm the calculations. Make sure it's correct. Okay, I think it's correct. Four point seven seven four millimeter over kilo newton. And then try the second bar. Second bar is two hundred millimeter. And the diameter is 15 millimeters, so 7.5 millimeters squared. What is the E? It's 70. 70 kilo newton over millimeter squared. So I think we can try. Okay, it's around 1.62. And then we could also uh, can directly try to look at the E1 is uh, F1, the small f, multiply with F1. Or maybe let me, let me write the numbers directly. this multiply with what's the F F1 is minus 20 kilo Newton oh I forgot the units let me move a little bit to the right the left this is kilo, uh, millimeter over kilo Newton and E2 is 10 kilo Newton so E1 is negative. And E2 is Okay. 
Okay, but I think, I think, I'm writing this to make like a, a, a lot of calculation, but, but specifically, what you need to remember is this E fly slide. We focus on this. We define it E, right? Okay. I think this is an optional if you want to find like, the small app. Like for example, if the uh, if the question requires you to find this uh, element, we say that is the element for. Uh, flexibility coefficient, okay. then this will be your um, your way. But I think for most of the part, our jobs for the axial elongation is to find how elongated the bar will be. So we need to just define this E. As long as you can get this, then I think it's okay. You can, you can directly write this. Okay. So no need to write one by one. Just go input your F, L, A, E. And if you need to count the total, then you need to plus another E, the, the compatibility equation. Then you can, can and you can directly write this. And you can uh, add these two together. So we can add these two together, that the combinations for both of them are 0 0.1, or maybe we write negative plus, so this equals 6.62 millimeter. So again, let me rephrase uh, what we've done here is one example on the statically determined structure. So the structure is defined with the force. It uh, already has all the information it needs. Okay. Because after the sections, we are going to see for structure that is indeterminate, indeterminate uh, structure, which is we are not going to know immediately the force that is uh, applied in, in the structure. Okay, maybe one more example to see. Uh, we have this, okay. There's a lot of words. But uh, I think the important one is, just look at the picture here. So it says a weightless beam AC. Is, is given you weight, so this is, uh, I suppose, as the information I mentioned, it's weightless, so, so just it's saying that this uh, beam AC supported at end A, okay, by a vertical column, so this is the column, and then at end C, supported by a vertical rod that is attached to at B to a uh, that link jack that is a jack that can support the required load 
in rod CD, but can also move the vertical position of D. So this leveling jack here, so you can move vertically. So you can move upward or downward. So this part here is going to move, okay? And then point B, the point of the application of some force P. It can be anywhere. It can be anywhere in this AC, beam AC. But it has range from 0 to 1 for A. So this is A. So the purpose of the leveling jack is to keep the AC perfectly level. What does it mean? Perfectly level is we have to make sure this AC stays as it is. Okay? So it doesn't go like this. And so, so if there is some force, so this leveling jack needs to make a reaction. Okay? So if the force is getting this beam going down, so the leveling jack needs to make adjustment. Okay? So that's the uh, the leveling jack purpose, and then the question is here. This is the second paragraph, the question. So first is determine the axial stress in the column and in the rod. So we have two axial stress, sigma one and sigma two. So this is column, and that's the rod. Okay. When load P is on the B, uh, determine the downward displacement of N A. When the load is on B, so there will be some displacement on this point A. And the last question, determine the displacement uh, UD required at the leveling jack for the beam AC. So at the at the point D, okay, at the point D, to be level under the given loading, that is to make UC equal UA. So that's that's. That's one information. So we need to make this assumption clear. So we need to make the displacement. If there is a displacement on A, the displacement on C need to be the same with A because we need to make this AC the same level, right? Uh, the relevant dimension and measure purpose are. I need to write this because uh, I'm using different different unit so I need to make sure it's within the uh, SI so P is 9 L1 is 3 meter L2 is 1.5 L is 3 meter A is 0 0.4 a1 is, so you don't need to calculate the, uh, the area is given directly. Area, area 2. And the same material, so E1 equal E2 equal 200 GPA. Okay, now let's let's see the questions again. So the question A it's asking the stress, okay? The stress in the column, which means this one here, and this uh, uh, and this stress two in the rod, which is here. Okay. So basically our focus point is on this beam AC. Okay, the beam AC. So the first question is actually it's actually asking the statics, right? It's actually asking the statics. What is the reaction force at A and what is the reaction force at C? Okay. So uh, that is the, for the uh, stress one and stress two, or sigma one and sigma two. So the first thing we can do is maybe we can, we can cut this and analyze in more detail. So let's, let's go take away that part and write uh, in a free body diagram okay because our focus point is the AC so we draw AC oh. so let's say this is AC 
So let's say this is A, this is C. Okay, and then we have P in, in between here. Let's say that's P. And then we have, let's say we have, this is, uh, let, let me name this for the C, the reaction is F2. And for the F1, Let me just make this going down like that, okay? And how you write the, or uh, define the directions, it's up to you, okay? Later you can define after you calculate, after you compute. If there is some um, um, different sign, then maybe you, you, you miss out the, the drawing. So I think it's still okay. And then this will be the AL and what else? This is B, okay. What else do we have? If you want, you can make this, since this whole thing is L, then this will be L minus AL, right? Since we know only P, I mean from the information, then I think we can we can we can do both moment. Okay. So take moment here, take moment here with respect A and C, and then we see the equations because we know the P, and then maybe we can have some. I think it's a linear equations and solve using a system of linear equation. So maybe taking the sigma moment, let's say uh, C first, okay, that's it, it's zero. And let's say this part is positive. So take the, the couple moment. So take the moment. Okay. So moment, so remember, moment at C. So everything goes to C, goes to here. And I set the, um, Concept that positive is going to be counterclockwise. If you want to try with the clockwise, it's okay. At the end, it will be the same result. Okay. So let, let's just make, make, take this uh, counterclockwise positive. Okay, so P goes here, right? So P multiplied with this distance is positive, so we can write that. And then this also positive, we can write that. And you see that. It's supposed to be maybe it's supposed to be posted, but I think it's still okay. Just write first. So F one L plus P P L minus A L, right? Equal to zero. Okay. Let, let me write first uh, this the moment for C and A. So let's move to another point. Let's take the sigma moment of A and then take this the same counterclockwise is positive. And then at A we have P going here. It's going clockwise, so it's negative and then here it's also counterclockwise so it's positive so we have so f2 l because it's positive and minus p a l okay that is equal to zero so we have these two equations and i think we can get both okay we can get both <coughs> So L is three, so F1, L is equal, or let me write uh, plus, let me write PL, one minus A. Mm, F1, L equal minus PL, one minus A. 
I think we can just plug in and we can remove L F1 what is A is 1 point, uh, 0 0.4 so it's 0 0.6 0 0.6 multiply with 9 it's negative 5.4 So it's actually opposite directions, okay? but if you uh, another tips to avoid some mistake in your calculations, if you write at the beginning like this, just make it the same throughout your calculations and keep your signs negative. Okay. At the end, you can make some conclusions. Okay. If you change in the middle, maybe you will mix out uh, between different computations, and maybe that will be not good for your calculation. So just keep it, keep it, keep it simple. But actually, if you want to know directly um, what directions, you can think like, uh, imagine like this is a bar, and the one you know is the P, right? So imagine this will be pushed down. What's the direction here? It's supposed to up, up, right? To make balance. So intuitively, you know that this is going up. If you think you can bar, if you push this, you will have some reactions. Right? Of course, this reaction should go up, and this reaction also going up because it will make this balance right intuitively. But anyway, if you write like this, and maybe you write F going down, it's also okay. You will see in the uh, calculations the result with uh, whether it's positive or negative. Okay, so we have. Negative five five point four, and then do the same thing for the F two. So F two is equal P A. P A is so F two. Uh, nine and zero point six. Uh, zero point four. Sorry, zero point four. Zero point four is three point six. Right, three to six kilonewton. Okay. So for A, I think. Uh, sigma 1 is negative 5.4 divided by or maybe let me write here to make sure that you remember that sigma is f over a right the sigma 1 uh, divided by 1 millimeter squared Checking the calculations. Okay, the result will be in GPA, but I think it will be with this long of decimals. So let me change to the mega Pascal. Uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so this will be equal to. 4.18 MPA and then the negative means it will be a compressive and then the Sigma 2 is going to be F2 is 3.6 kilonewton divided by 516. So it's 6.6.976 6 MPA, and since it's positive, it's getting attention. You could also think this compressive and tension, as I mentioned before, you can think like, um, will the column getting shorter or getting longer? Like for example, this part here, the column is getting compressed, which means that it's going to be reduced, right? The, the, the height will be reduced, so it's going to be compressed. You can think like that also. And 
this part here. The, the rod here is getting a tensile, right? Getting a tensile. It's getting um, elongated. Okay, that's the first one, the stress, right? So from the calculations, we see that it seems that on the column, it will be reduced. The elongations will be shorter. I mean, it will be minus, the elongation will be minus. And for the second one, for the rod, elongation will be positive, will be longer, will be stretched out. The rod will be stretched out. Okay. So the first part done, statics. Oh, it's not B, sorry. It's just A. B is the, the, the uh, different questions. Okay, let, let, let me go for uh, B. So precisely, this will be the same as what we did before. So for B, is we need to find displacement, right? Displacement. Displacement it says U A. So do to find this displacement at the uh, downward displacement U A at N A, then we need so need to determine change in column, right? Change in column. And also determine elongation of the rod. Okay, now we take the, f the formula. Let me write the formula, F, L, A, E, okay? So always, every time you see questions related to axial elongations, you, s you see the words elongations, you see the words displacement uh, within the structures, you go by this formula, okay? So we take E1, F1, L1, all the the component for the first part, right? So remember, F1 is negative 5.4. So E1 is negative 5.4 kilo Newton. L1 is three meter and a one is one thousand two hundred ninety millimeter square and then e is two hundred gpa so two hundred kilo newton over millimeter square If we, if we check the units, I think we've basically done. It's in uh, the distance, in the meter. But I think we need to change the millimeter because it's the decimals. So it's 6.27 uh, multiply with 10 with power of negative 5 in meter multiply with 1000 is going to be 0, 0, 0. 0.0 so this will be negative 0 0.0627 
Okay, maybe let me write also for E2. Actually, for the displacement of UA, it's the same as this E1, right? So we write here, the UA is negative. So the vertical displacement is this, 0 0.0627 millimeter. But let me just compute the E2. Okay. This is for actually for the next question, but let, uh, we can compute now. F2 is 3.6, or let me write here, or maybe I will write the formula first. So 3.6 kilonewton. And then the length is 1.5 meter. And then A2 is 516 millimeter squared. And then E is the same. So kilo newton over a millimeter squared. So again, this will conclude the same units. And this will be equal to 0 0.0523 millimeter. And what does this mean? So E2 is actually, <coughs> so for UA, we will write here to make sure we got the idea. Displacement is that. So it means that this is a vertical displacement at A. Okay. Now E2, let me, let me see the picture first, okay? So E2, we have displacement for the C and for D, right? So we need to make sure that we also connect those two. So E2, so elongation is the difference bit, so let me write, um, right here so elongations is the difference between displacement of its two ends so you see and you so it, it goes to be the total elongation is supposed to be displacement at C minus displacement at D. Okay. Okay, that's the number B. And I think I'm writing this taking too much space. So let me write in a more concise and precise here this is too big let me make it smaller so you can see more clear So this is number B. Number C is determine the, the displacement UD. Okay. So we are we are now develop this elongation two, which is UC minus UD. Okay. UC minus UD. Okay. We take a break for what? Okay, we are back till into the lecture. So we find the E one, and we know that the only displacement for the this uh, first part is only for displacement A. So we can know for sure displacement A is same as E one is the zero point zero 
six to twenty seven millimeter uh, particle displacement. And then for elongation two for E two, uh, we see that the the displacement uh, for e, uh, or the elongation itself is the difference of the displacement of C and displacement of P. Okay, so the next question is uh, actually asking about the uh, uh, wait. It's UD, right? Okay. At the at the questions, remember that we have this assumptions. Okay. So we need to make sure that the beam AC is at the same level, which means displacement of C and displacement of A seem to be the same. Okay. They need to be on the same level. Okay. Now let me write again that part that you see is supposed to be the same as UA. Now from the uh, elongation 2, we can write that UD is UC minus E2. So because UC is the same as UA, then we can directly change UC into UA, and then we can minus with the E2. Okay, So UD is what is u a is 0 0.0627 millimeter minus 0 0.0523 millimeter or you can write maybe i can write in them just in terms of positive okay to make to to, to make sure we we understand this is 0 0.06, but vertical is at A, so it's going down, okay? Uh, or maybe we can write a compress, okay? So compress. Or maybe not here, maybe in the number. So compress. Okay, so this will be UD is 0 0.01 something, right? to make to write this is going downward or maybe not s make it the same okay not see okay sorry sorry to make it uh, maybe just with, with that okay. downward so we can also make this downward with that so to keep uh, to keep beam AC for the given position and to support a 3.6 kilonewton load right then we need to allow rod attachment or just rod point D to move downward that much okay, small displacement zero point uh, zero oh, too much zero sorry sorry too much zero
can also see from the uh, from the elongations for e1 it's negative which means it's going to be um, compressed we, we can say it's compressed and for e2 it's positive so we say it's, it's uh, in tension That's for uh, another example, statically determined structures. There's another example, but I think I will skip on that and maybe if we have time we can look back later the next section so our lecture today will be the statically indeterminate structures so let me move to the new page here so let me put down here down there let me write something on above this is statically indeterminate uh, structure okay now what does it mean and what's what will be the differences okay so if we see these two type of uh, structures, okay, maybe this one can go about here. Okay. So if you choose, if you see these two pictures, okay, A and B, A says statically determined structure, B statically determined structure. So which means that if you use statics to find or to determine uh, the uh, the forces inside the structures for the for the A we could easily done right we could easily done because there will be two forces and then we have these structures here okay. but the second one since this is attached to the wall okay, we are not sure how to know this part. Let's say we say this is an indeterminate structure. Okay, let me write here. Okay, let me write here. So values of the forces are independent. Of the materials involved because we could see that we see we have the PC and we have the PB right the, the forces that is uh, uh, written down on the structure but here both both ends are attached to the wall so two unknown two unknown PA and PP oh uh, not PP PC sorry so we we know only PB So the next question is, or the problem here for, the, for this B is, 
we cannot determine with statics. Okay, just with the statics we cannot determine. So not possible to determine P A P C uh, P A P C uh, from equilibrium or from statics. Statics. That's why it's indeterminate. Okay, now how to work on this? Okay. The step is similar to what we have done. Start with equilibrium. So this is steps. And then element force deformation. Which means this is the, the elongations. Okay. And then geometry of the deformation. The total uh elongation if that happened. So it's still steps the same. Okay. Now, if we look at when more closely, let's consider this part here. I think we can make it smaller. Okay. Okay, consider this as a condition for indeterminate structure. So we have the wall, okay, similar to what we said before. And we have a bar, okay, so this has uh, the same diameter now, six. So we have one and two, okay. two bar. Okay. We have Three different points, A, B, C, and then we have the uh, P, B, so this will be uh, force, and then to make it uh, simple, all the uh, elements, they are the same, same materials, same area, same length, or uh, different length, uh, L2 is twice as uh, L1. Okay. So that's uh, the information given. Now to start with, to start with, we can take the equilibrium. Okay. Now look at this. If we cut open, okay, if we cut open, this is similar to what we have done, but let's see. Here. We have the free body diagram for each node for A, B, and C. So we can open the first one. Okay. It's, it's similar to what we have done before. So cut open, and we see that because of the forces in the middle, that perhaps there will be some forces that is going attracted. And for or you can maybe start from the PB okay, because we know that PB is from the uh, from the uh, information, and so we can start from the middle. So we can cut open. So to to make this equilibrium, then we will have another force there, right? And then cut open on the on the right side. It makes this F two and another one from there. So so of course these reactions need to be canceling each other. Cancel each other. Okay. This body diagram for each A, B, C is just for helping if we need to observe for each section. Okay. And now, from this equilibrium, we can write at least we know if we want to make the sum for the forces. Okay. Okay. At least from the from the uh, the middle one, we see that. F1 
is equal PB plus F2. Or F1 minus F2 is equal to PB. And then for the left one, PA is negative F1. And then F2 is equal PC. Okay, still, still, we have F1, we have F2. Still, we cannot solve this, right? As we mentioned before, we cannot solve this through equilibrium. So we need to have another constraint, okay, another constraint. So let's say we, we want to know PA and PB, okay? But since we don't know the F1 and F2, we also, uh, Oh, we have we know PB. We we want to know uh, PA and PC, but we need to know these relations. What the relation between F1 and F2? Okay, that's uh, what we are going to do. Okay. So we need to find a constraint. We need to find a constraint to limit this problem so we can solve. Okay. So we need to take one more. So we need to at least make a relation between this F1 and F2. So what's the, the constraint? Okay. See that this is a wall, right? This is a wall. If there is some forces here, of course, maybe we will see some elongation at some part. But at the end, can we just assume that elongation needs to be zero because of the wall? Right? I think that's a very good assumption. And that will be a, a good constraint to limit our problem. So we can solve the equation. So the, a good constraint here is the elongations AC need to be zero. And from our axial elongation formula, we can get this uh, elongation equals zero to be involved with. So remember the E fly. The e fly. So E. OK. And then if you see all the things here, maybe we can have some formula and we can cancel some, uh, some numbers, right? So which means that from this equals zero, we know that this EAC is becoming, is come from E1 plus E2, okay? And next, each E1 and E2, we can substitute with this. This equals zero, and we can say E1 is equal to E2. And, we, and then we can have relation between the F, that we need to solve the equilibrium, okay? So, we take this, um, uh, let's say this is equal to zero, right? And then we take F1, L1, A1, E1 is equal negative F2, L2, A2, E2. And then we can look at the information that since A is the same, so A1, A2 is the same, E1, E2 is the same, right? And I think it is based the distance, right? So L1 is L, so F1, L minus F2, L2 is 2L, so negative, let's say this is negative 2L. So this is can be cancelled L. So F1 is negative 2, F2. And then we can set the following. 
So since F1 minus F2 is equal PB, uh, let me write here. So F1 minus F2 is PB. So F1 or maybe minus F2 minus F2. Okay. So F2 is minus uh, 1 over 3 PB. Okay. That's what we get first. And F1. It's 2 over 3, right? 2 over 3 PB. You could just plug in, okay? Plug in and look for. So then we get the uh, forces. And if you want to know the deformations or the, the displacement for B, so if the question is asking this displacement here for this UB there, we can f uh, get from the E1 or E2. So let me write with blue. UB can be equaling the E1, okay? Which means that E1 is getting over, but 2 is getting shorter. So we can take this displacement at B with the elongation one, right? Say this is the one here, it's getting elongation like for that, okay? If we see from the E1, but if we see from two, two is getting shorter, right? And that will be the same UB. Okay? So UB can be equal to E1 or UB is equal to negative E2. Depends on our uh, perspective. Okay. Uh, if you think maybe taking subject from the left is easier to uh, to to understand, maybe take that as your uh, perspective. So we can take it from this A. Okay. So if this is your point of view, then you can take this E1. So you can take this UB, the, the elongation to, or the displacement of this B as the elongation of this bar one. Okay. So for the indeterminate structure, the difference between this and the, the previous one is we need to determine this, okay? The constraint. So if you see any, maybe some random questions and if, if you see that if it is not possible to determine the equilibrium, then you need to add one more constraint. One more constraint. And for this case, constraint will be the elongations. The total elongation it will be zero. So this is additional constraint, I mean right here, to solve the equilibrium.
Okay, we we see the how oh. the these two principles or statics, and if there is no equilibrium, which means it uh, and we can solve with uh, equilibrium with the statics, then we need to add constraints. And then the next one, so so far the elongation is based on the deformation we have okay, from the force that we give the uh, materials. But the temperature can also um, affect the elongation. We have the thermal expansion. Okay. So that will be the next section. So next sections will be the thermal effects on axial deformations. It's not too long, so it's we just taking one formula. Okay. So we just take one formulations. Uh, there is one example here, but I think this is for next Friday. So we'll skip that for a while. So let's go for this part here. So this is the, the thermal effects. So sometimes uh, the problem might be includes the axial elongations, okay? and also maybe it will have this thermal effects okay? in in some uh, maybe the structure. We start with the formulations, or this is just the the normal strain. Let me write strain with T. This means it's strain because of the thermal. Okay, it's equal to alpha multiplied with the delta T. Just that. Okay. The alpha is the coefficient. Coefficient of thermal expansion. And delta T is the temperature. Temperature uh, differences. And usually for our case, the delta T should be, uh, if we want to make it elongated, then it's going to increase. Right? So basically, the formulations in total, if the thermal is happening in the uh, system, then we see that this is this original strain, strain because of the stress, and it's strain because of the thermal. Okay? So we have this uh, additional uh, number. Okay? So we need to add the alpha, the, there is some thermal. So basically, it's just that. Basically, just that. And sometimes we also see these two different picture here. Okay, for example, say this is expanded, increase. Uh, it's a smooth surface, so it's easy to increase. But here, it's uh, attached to the support C and D. Okay. So we say we say that this, there will be a restraint on the thermal deformations. Okay. 
and these equations for the, 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 the above equations this is uh, we call this let me write first stress strain temperature equation for axial deformation that is linearly linearly elastic Okay, now to better understand the magnitude of the, uh, the strain, let's see, uh, suppose this figure, okay, suppose, fix, fix N bar, the bar CD, made of steel that has E equal 200 GPA you will see a lot steel with 200 GPA because that is the most common structural steel and then it has alpha the coefficient and sigma we have the sigma there so this is the yield and okay, the sigma yield for the steel and then still uniformly heated at temperature to the 8 degrees Celsius if the walls are rigid then the strain will be zero so we can take the sigma for t as you remember we have the expansion for the constraint from the thermal this is the idea okay now the sigma is if we take the uh or or if you remember the from the uh young's modulus this is what you have right uh, Sigma is E multiplied with the strain. So the sigma here for the sigma T is E multiplied with the strain. The strain is alpha and delta T.
and the sigma okay the sigma this needs to have a compression why why do you have this this minus because we have the walls so imagine it's heated and then this part is getting elongated but since the wall is fixed and rigid we need to have the reactions that need to be uh, to cancel out the thermal expansion or the thermal effect. That's why we need to have the stress that is going to have the, the negative. And we say this and make a conclusion that will be a compressive stress to make sure that it is on uh, the wall, the rigid wall. To prevent the steel from expand the rigid wall so negative 200 multiply with 11.7 and then 38 okay. oh, I need to write the units forget to write this is GPA this is over okay now for some calculations this will be negative 88.92 megapascal or we can write 88.92 megapascal but in compression So if we compare this stress, okay, if you compare this stress of, because of the thermal with the sigma yield, sigma yield is 200. This is eight. It's around, so 250, two, it's around 80 something. It's around almost one third, okay, one third of the yield. So it's not exceeding the yield stress, which means that the deformation is uh, in plastic. So, so all the uh, components that we talked before, the equations, is considerably. Uh, so we, it's, it's still okay. Okay, it's still okay within the uh, the limit that we we make at the at the beginning. And because we know that this will induce stress for uh, because of the thermal, so to design something that is related to thermal, okay, maybe space, like the rocket, then we need to understand the um, the effect by the the thermal, okay, because if we are not designing wise for the uh, like for example spacecraft, maybe the thermal increase and it will induce some stress and perhaps the design will be maybe uh, will be will, will, will break down okay. the space crack will be uh, break down so remember that if okay for structure that are not free, not free to expand, significant stress can be induced by temperature change.
Okay, I think for today's class, I will end up here. We are going to, I think, go for more example and practice, especially some parts on this chapter three. And since next week, we are having holiday. The next day for our course is two weeks, uh, Friday, right? Friday, Friday next week. Yeah, Friday next week. And I will begin the Friday next week review of some part, especially chapter two, maybe having more practices. Yeah, this Friday we still have class. So tutorial this Friday, and then another Friday, another tutorial. Because I think, I think, since we are having a, so today is March 28th. So we need to decide the, your meter. <laughs> For now, the schedule is between 11 or 18, April. So I think I, I let you fit in which 11 or 18. And to prepare 11, 18, next two Fridays, I will focus more on tutorials. Okay, and I think the chapters is one, two, three. I think one is included in two and three <laughs> because it's statics is included in two and three. So focus on two and three, and we can see which part that uh, we are going to have. Okay. Like because some topics I'm skipping, like this chapter three, I'm skipping some parts that is too details. I'm skipping that. I think that will be our class. Oh, before we end, uh, I have a... <laughs> no question, no question. Okay. Just, just a small survey, small survey. <laughs> Don't worry. Because if I ask like some question, it takes maybe long, longer time. <laughs> this is just a small survey, small survey. And I think maybe I need to prepare something for you, like um, additional uh, additional source to learn. Okay. I think there's a lot, but I need to find which one that is uh, suitable for you. Okay, I think I need just to set up the survey. Number one, and then send the information back to Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> and that's okay. I just want to know, like, uh, how do we, uh, how do we proceed in the future? I think I, I see some. I haven't finished checking all the answers, but some of you have, have to check. Uh, I think you need to have a lot of review of statics. Mostly, you are have a good, good way to, to start. In the middle, there will be some 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 process that you need to review. But I think at the at the very beginning, you you had a good good way, okay, good way. Uh, okay. okay. Everyone done. Uh, lastly, just um, the okay. Wait for some students. If you still right. Anyone? Okay. Okay, I think okay. Uh, yeah. Last one is just um, to make sure that you have the. Uh, attendance for this survey. <laughs>
60 to, yes, I think 60 on 60. But that is from the 80 points for The total is 80. So the 20, I can add later, okay? <laughs> if you need at the end of the uh, semester. Okay, if you're done, then we finish the course.